Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Balancing Act. We're so glad you joined us. I'm Julie Moran. And I'm Olga Viverdi. All right, Julie, I know you love fashion. Oh, my gosh, are you kidding me? Duh. Well, today I'll be talking to a designer whose Southern fashions... Love that even more. I knew it. Southern fashions are making a splash across the country, and she, this is a great story. She used online education to help her along the way. She's beautiful. She's talented. She's successful. Southern fashion... Uh, I can't wait. I'm going to buy you something. My birthday. I yes, will. Thank Happy you birthday, so girlfriend. And speaking of education, today's Be the Change is all about educating our next generation of young ladies to pursue careers in technology technology and science, mm. so important. We'll explain how one company is working with boys and girls clubs across America to pique their interest. Love that story. Plus, do you kind of argue sometimes with your hubby? About money? You're going to ask yeah. me that? No, 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 but I just hide credit card shoe purchases. <laughs> Did you hear that, Rob? <laughs> She's hiding it. Well, we've got advice on how to avoid those financial landmine situations. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, the balancing act, and it's a good show, starts right now. Are you living your dream and achieving the financial success that goes along with it? If you're like most women, you've probably been putting your career goals on hold, focusing on family needs or something else, but there's a way to fast track your future success and still handle home and family matters. Today we're joined by one such entrepreneur, very special and motivated woman here, Stephanie Carter, founder, design director for the Southern Fashion House, who began her success with an online education. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, how are you? Good, I love what you're wearing and I know it has to do with what you design. What is that? Thank you, this is Judith March. This is just a little dress that we recently designed. And you took an idea and went with it and had become very successful. But I want our viewers to hear your story because I find it to be so passionate. You start college at Troy, you have no idea what you want to do. No idea. Happens to most of us, tell me about that. Yes, I, I went in undecided and three years into college, they were like, okay, it's time to decide. Three years undecided. Three years undecided. What are you taking? Electives? I, electives and the things that you have to take. And so I decided to go into business and marketing at Troy. And one of my teachers, Dr. Steve Garrett, inspired me by a class project. We had to create our own business. And so and what I did you create? I created Deja Vu, which was supposed to be a retail store, a retail women's clothing store. Okay. Because I love to shop. Okay. <laughs> and most women love to shop, so okay, we can relate. So he gives you this project, you take this idea, and then what? And then I actually do it. You're kidding. <laughs> you actually go to the bank and pull out money and start? I enjoyed the um, project, so it inspired me so much. I was like, okay, I sold my car for $4,000. I went to the bank and I opened a checking account and I, I did it. Does Dr. Garrett know what you're doing? Absolutely. And what is he saying? He loves it. He's actually in charge of the marketing group at Troy, and they come visit our corporate office a lot. So while you're going to Troy, you're taking your classes, I'm assuming still, you're starting this business. How are you, what are you doing? How are you doing both? Uh, well, actually the teachers at Troy, them are in still now, were very flexible and they allowed me to fax my homework in. That was before online so much. And then at the end, my fourth year in college, they allowed me to do, or I did online classes so I could also balance the new business and finish up college. So how did those online classes benefit you? Because I can kind of see the flexibility around them. Absolutely. They allow me to be able to do my job and um, finish college and further my career. So you're like such a great example here for many women out there who say, you know, I've got so much going on and I don't have the time to go back to school. And the online route is a very positive one. Absolutely, they offer over 200, I think, divisions, and um, most of all those are online. And how has this deja vu entrepreneur gone for you? Well, it actually went into um, Judith March, that's the wholesale clothing line, and we also have a clothing line um, by Missy Robertson from Duck Dynasty. And what other stuff do you design? Uh, I design, um, which is, um, maxi dresses, we have um, a game day line, which also Troy inspired me because when I would go to the games, everybody wanted those school colors. And so we started, now we're licensed for all the SEC teams. So we do game day dresses and game day t-shirts. And so it's everything from casual to 
dressy. And I do want a lot of our viewers out there to know the reality here is that you are also a mother, yes. you are expecting. Yes. So in your own words, how do you balance it all? Ooh, I, I struggle with, <laughs> <laughs> with balance every day of my life, but you just have to keep um, your priorities straight. And it is important to balance. Um, and that's the great thing about Troy offering online classes today, that it allows women to balance and actually create their own um, career. If you had to go back and get some more online courses for whatever reason, maybe to expand the business, would you see yourself being able to do it again at Troy University? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. What would you say is the takeaway from just what Dr. Garrett did for you, how he inspired you, where you are today, and the online opportunities for women? I just think that it was such a large university, but yet you felt so at home and they offered so many things to make you it's like they want you to succeed. And let me tell you, you are the epitome of succeeding. There's Thank no you. more excuses. If you think it, you can do it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good luck to you and to your unborn child. Oh, thank Is you. it a girl or a boy? We don't know. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. And if you'd like to read more on today's topic, you can also visit us at thebalancingact.com or get a little bit social and log on to Facebook forward slash The Balancing Act fans and check out Troy University's online. Today's Be the Change is about investing in the next generation. I love that. The Boys and Girls Clubs of America and CA Technologies have been partnering for several years now, empowering girls to explore a future in technology. Their Tech Girls Rock initiative hopes to cultivate an interest in science and ultimately tech-related educational opportunities and careers. And we're headed to Raleigh, North Carolina to learn more about this innovative and inspiring workshop. The Girls Clubs of Raleigh, North Carolina recently played host to hundreds of excited tweens and teens, all part of the club's effort to get young girls motivated for future careers in America's ever-expanding high-tech economy. With momentum fueled by the Clinton Global Initiative, the Raleigh workshop Tech Girls Rock is part of a national effort supported by CA Technologies, contributing in excess of $10 million in monetary and software funding since 2005. Partnering with the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, CA Technologies is aiming at inspiring young girls about high tech, academically and professionally, in one-on-one -on -one and group problem solving, demonstration and education. High tech engineer for CA Technologies, Emily Childs is one of many professionals donating her time and energy to help the next generation of young girls achieve their dreams. In this act of encouraging young women and youth to really get into this. We live in a technology age. So if we can get young women out there, imagine the innovation that can come from different perspectives. So why don't more young women choose high technology careers? They never considered it. That according to a study conducted by global research firm Penn Schoen Berlin, it found 63% never considered a career in engineering. And in a Girl Scouts of America study, only 13% of female teens say STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics related careers would be their first choice. See, only 25% of the women are in the Encouraging, world. educating, and inspiring young girls remains the primary focus of the nationwide workshops. Well, I hope that through today alone that we spark an interest, that we've planted a seed, that this is a part of that maybe the genesis of the movement to start shifting that social norm, to start shifting the way women view the field of technology and IT careers and saying, I can do that. Other CA Technologies professionals are equally confident Tech Girls Rock will have positive outcomes for years to come. And so we really want to make sure that we influence these girls at this age because this is where, you know, they tend not to, they tend to drop out at higher levels. And so it's really important to instill in them the different types of careers they can have and really de demystify some of the geekiness around technology and maybe some of the pre, um, preconceived notions they may have around what a career in technology could be like. When asked what her favorite thing about the workshop, this tween had this to say. The one thing that I like the most so far is when I just came out of the computer lab and we're doing coding in there. So, well, my group, we're doing a basketball play and she's a girl 
and you get to tell her how to move, when to move, and how, how far to do it. And this 13-year-old is discovering new things at Tech Girls Rock. I was excited because I'm usually on my phone, like, and I honestly don't know what a phone is, like, actually, but I'm always on my phone. Anagram. Y'all know what an anagram is. Does anybody no. have an idea? From anagrams to computer code and just high-tech advice generously given by caring professionals, these workshops are living up to their name. They rock. To find out more about Tech Girls Rock workshops in your city and state, visit the Boys and Girls Club of America website. For Be The Change, I'm Julie Moran. How often do you and your spouse talk about money? Even more specifically, how often do you fight about it? It is not an easy topic for most couples or for any of us, but there is a right way to do it and have a successful outcome. And here to wrap up our three-part Money Matters series is Ryan Haler from Bright Peak Financial. So great to have you on the set. Hey, thanks for having us back. You know, money has to be the number one thing that couples fight about. What are the most common issues that you see? It's all across the board, Yeah. quite frankly. I'm and we've seen it all. What it boils down to is sort of a misconception that, that's out there. And it's the idea that, that money and money decisions are logical decisions that we make with our brain. Right. The reality is we make so many of our decisions, including those about money, it's, it's emotional, right? We make them with our heart. Completely emotional. And you think, oh, this is a factual thing, money matters, but it's really... Absolutely. Very emotional to talk Absolutely. about. What um, is the best way to start the conversation for couples? Yeah, and the good news is it's actually easier than you think. Really? So, so two key things to remember. The first is timing is everything. Okay. And the second is the words that you use matter. Okay. Love that. Love so, that. So on the on the first one, uh, timing is everything. Couple of things to remember there. Okay. Uh, the first is don't have conversations about money or other you know, important issues when you're already emotional, when you're distracted. Tired, when it's yeah. Yeah, don't late wanna... at night, mm -hmm. rushing off to get the kids to school. No, okay, bad, bad time, okay. Bad time. Second thing uh, is make sure you do it regularly. And mm -hmm. so it should be something that you, know, you, you actually have ongoing conversation about money, not just like, okay, we have to talk about this big issue and then we're done. Right. And so something that my wife and I have found works well um, is we actually schedule time. Okay. As formal as it sounds. Right, it sounds um, a little formal. It but... does. But, but you know, like, okay, we get the kids down to bed. Right. We know that you know, we've got a few hours before you know, it's time for us to kind of you know, turn yeah. in for the evening. And it's a great time for us to reflect on the day. And also, money can be part of that conversation. You and can also have a, a date night and talk about money, right? I love right? it, yeah. It'd be yeah. a ton of fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, my producers told me that you have this game that you want me to play. And I said, all right, I'm game for it. But um, seriously, I will play this game, but you got to explain Excellent. it to me. Excellent. All right. So it actually goes back to the second point, okay. which is the words that you use matter. Okay. Okay. And so um, have you ever done improv? I have. All right. Good. So three key, three key rules to improv. The first is you want to fully step into your partner's world, so both of us, okay. right? Okay. The second is the, wor the words that you use matter, like I mentioned before, Absolutely. but it's like think about words that build, so like and, yes, also, yes. versus yes. words yes. like <laughs> no, but, right? They, they kind of mm -hmm. they they, they ruin the energy. And then the third is you want to make sure that you're always trying to make your partner look good. Love that. All right. Okay. Do I have a line in this game? Uh, how about uh, you want to buy a new car? Okay. Does that work? Uh, that works for me. Okay. All right, we'll start. Honey, I just really want to buy a new car. But we just finished paying for the car that we have two years ago. That doesn't feel good. See, already I'm like saying, you said but, and you exactly. said no, and I'm like. Exactly, I'm, yeah, it's like we killed it right we there. We killed right? it. Yeah. All right, we got to try it again in a positive okay. tone. Okay, all right, so all right, let's, so let's try it the right same, way. Same, do the same, same line? thing. Okay. Honey, I just really would like to buy a new car. Yes, I know you've been driving the one you've got for a while. Mm -hmm. And it's also nice not having a car payment. I agree, it is, but you know, I, the car has 500,000 miles on it and we're driving our kids in it. It's really, I don't think it's safe. Yes, I, I can definitely see your point. Mm -hmm. And it makes me think that maybe there's a creative way that we can figure out how to get the car and also not saddle ourselves with this huge car payment. Yes, we can do it. Let's do it. Let's I do say it. let's buy a new car. All right. Okay, I got it. It's got it. positive, Felt better, positive, didn't it? positive, yeah. yes. I, I love that. And now what about 
this has got to be a problem, setting like long-term and short-term money yeah. goals for couples. Do they fight about that too? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's where a lot of tension can come in. So the, the key thing that I would say to remember and to really try to strive for as a, as a couple is to make sure that you're on the same page with whatever the big the big goals are. Right. Okay. And so whether that's, you know, saving for a vacation, planning for retirement, uh, you know, uh, maybe it's about saving for your kids' college education, whatever that Huge might be. And okay. Important, right. Now, what we find though is that you know every couple is different. I think the key is really thinking about you know how do you keep both of you involved in the process, right? right? So when I hide the shoe receipts from my husband, that's not a good idea. Probably not. <laughs> Transparency is a good thing. <laughs> you know, this is such great information for couples. And, you know, how can we learn more? So, best thing to do is to go to our website, brightpeakfinancial.com. We've okay. got two really great resources for this specific topic. The first is a free ebook that you can download right love from our free. website. Our yep. viewers yeah. love free. Absolutely. And uh, so, look for the Money Talk the book. The Money Talk yep. book. Okay. Yep. So, that, that's the first thing. Then, the second thing is something new. We're offering workshops around the country for couples to come and actually spend a dedicated time talking about money, practicing some of the Fantastic. things like improv, all of those kind of things. And then the last thing is actually getting to create an action plan about, okay, what are we going to do moving forward? I love that. Could you just sign Julian Moran and Absolutely. Rob Moran? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah we'd love to have you there. Conference. That'd be great. No, great information. Thank you so much cool. for stopping by. Excellent. All right, remember to log on to thebalancingact.com for lots more. We've got lots there for you. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. What's for breakfast this morning? Is it the same old, same old? It doesn't have to be. Bye bye boring. Hello, hearty. Back with us again is my friend, Chef Chris Paul, to show us how to make a hearty noodle omelet. And I know we're going to use yakisoba noodles in yes. an omelet. Noodles? Yeah, in an isn't that crazy? Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, well, let's get started. Okay, so we want to spray this pan. I'm right. going to ask you to yep, spray that for me. I'll a do the spray. Awesome. Voila. Okay, so now we're going to mix up. If you would assist me today, yes? Oh, okay. We've got two eggs, so we want to crack those in the bowl. Okay, let's do it with no shells, right? Yep. Actually, I'm a pretty good cook, so let's see. Look at that. There you shell. go. Oh, there you, you go. You are good. <laughs> wow. I love to cook, I, I must say. And then we're going to add a little bit of that milk right there. Okay. Half and half. A little bit of milk. And we want to definitely add the seasoning packet, which we have right here. Oh, really? Before? Yep. Absolutely. Interesting. Incorporates all the flavor. Without this packet, it would not be the true traditional noodles that, that everybody loves. Okay, I think we got it all in there. So we're gonna mix this all up. And so now this pan is nice and hot, so we're gonna pour this right in the pan. Oh, Ooh, did you hear that? Did you hear it? Your food's to talking sizzle. to you. <laughs> Anything that sizzles is Thank my you. kind of thing. Awesome, so the next step we're gonna be doing is adding noodles. You wanna make sure you add noodles in there. So you put them in the microwave first. Four minutes, yep. Okay. What we're gonna do is take a little bit of the noodles out and I'm gonna chop these up. So, just, a, just a little bit for taste. Okay, like a quarter cup maybe? That's a perfect amount, yep. Okay. And then you wanna take the noodles, add just a little chop. You know, my girls would actually love this because they'll say, omelet, mommy, really? Eggs? <laughs> and sometimes I need to razzle dazzle, so this is a yes. good way. Yes, So we're gonna put a little bit of onions right in there. And I love onions. Me too. Pimentos. Pimentos, oh, right? a little, little bit color. of sassiness there. Yes, a little flavor. Okay, so now you've got these ingredients in here. We're gonna cook out the omelet. I'm gonna fold this in half, so if you'd give me that plate. You got it. Perfect. You have to come over for breakfast more often. Oh, and the I'd girls will be really happy that you made this for them. <laughs> oh, that smells and looks so good. So now I'm just gonna add a little bit of cheese. A little bit. Right? No, no, no. This is okay. for me, right? Wait, wait, let me let me <laughs> take it on advantage. There. <laughs> <laughs> Who's counting calories there this morning? Not and while me. you're at it, throw some bacon on there too. Okay, yeah. Ooh, yes. Love Beautiful. bacon. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Can I try it? Please. Let me please. see. Please, absolutely. Big fork, why not? Mmm. <laughs> Que rico. So good. Okay, you know you're always welcome. If you want to learn more about yakisoba noodle trays, log on to thebalancingact.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Share your favorite noodle recipes with us and have fun at breakfast. Oh, I'm going to take another bite.
great information oh, yeah. on today's show. And I gotta tell you, I really love, did you like them? Love. Stephanie's designs for Southern Fashion House. Such cute things, and I can see you in like six of them. Okay, great, so I can expect six new things for my birthday. No, one. <laughs> oh no. No, I want six. <laughs> Plus, love seeing all those girls getting excited about science and technology. We so can great. all be the change. Let us know how you are getting involved and impacting change in your community. Always more information on our website, thebalancingact.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. Until the next time. Remember, find your balance. So long, everybody.